In today's tutorial, we will be covering both 3D modeling with subject tools, surface modeling, and adding some more details in Grasshopper on a project called Istanbul Radio Tower that is currently under construction, designed by Malika Altenistic Architects. Let's get to it. Hey guys, Dushan here. Before we start, if this is your first time here, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to our channel as we upload new tutorials each week on Rhine and Grasshopper and how to use these tools specifically for architecture. All right, so in today's tutorial, we're going to model Istanbul TV and radio tower. Uh, this project uh, was designed by Melike Altenisik Architects from uh, Istanbul, Turkey. And the location of this project is also in Istanbul. So it's still uh, under construction. If we take a look at their website, you can see some more information about the project itself. Uh, it says that it's under construction. It has around 29,000 uh, square meters. You can also see a couple of uh, cool renderings here on their website. Uh, I highly recommend you to check um, these architects out, Malike Altenisik Architects. You can get more ideas about uh, the project itself. You can also get uh, an insight of, of the details and you can also check out their other projects. They have very cool projects as well. So I'll definitely check these architects out. And now let's, uh, let's take a look and let's see how we can model this in Rhine. So we're going to start simply with uh, the sub tools. And uh, afterwards, we're going to use uh, the surfaces that we created with SubD, and then we're going to use a little bit of grasshopper magic to make all of this uh, a reality. So I'm simply going to start, I have some reference images here. I'm going to log them. And uh, uh, from there, I'm simply going to use, uh, let's say, for example, I'm going to use the, the SubD cylinder. I'm gonna go to the top and I'm simply going to uh, create one, uh, one uh, cylinder here. And you don't need to care about uh, the details because with sub D you can you can modify everything as you go as you go along. So for example here, what I don't like here, I usually don't like this top, so I always take this top off. Uh, and we can simply select one edge and we can say fill. It will bring like a single surface. You have the option of single surface, and that uh, clears up the the bottom. We can also do that uh, on the bottom. And this gives you much more flexibility when it comes to uh, organizing your your topology. Okay, so for example, this one was quad. You can see the difference, the difference there and here. Again, you can always change that. So I'm going to simply go to the side view, and I'm simply going to use uh, wireframe mode, and I'm going to use these initial vertices, and I'm going to bring them in like this. I'm using the scale tool, and I'm holding my shift so I can scale this. Uh, in all directions and let me just see what would be like the best approach here so for example something like this let's bring it down and of course this is not going to be 100% uh, exact because we don't have uh, the the actual dimensions but we're going to use these images to uh, to recreate this as close as possible so I'm gonna move my image a little bit here in the middle like so if I press tab you will see how this would look like in sub D. So for example, uh, let me log this back and I'm going to expand this uh, a little bit more. I think that I need another edge here. So I'm going to select these edges and I'm going to say insert, uh, insert edge. And I'm simply going to use, for example, here. Let's double click it and let's expand it again. You can see how I'm getting a shape already from this side, of course. I also need to manipulate the other side uh, maybe let me see. So for example here, we also need to expand this guy a little bit Like so let's add another edge here. So insert edge So around here, okay and Yeah, that's that's much nicer. Let's bring it in this one also Okay, so here we can actually expand this bottom because we're going to cut it afterwards. So you can also scale it in a little bit. And uh, that's that's the idea behind creating this shape. Actually, I think uh, that we need to move this image just a tiny bit more. So I'm going to unlock it and move it like so, okay? All right, and uh, yeah, I think this edge is gonna be a little bit inward. Okay, so something like this from this side would do. And of course, there are, there's also some details on the top. We can deal with that 
um, later when we transform this to polysurface. So uh, at this point, I'm simply going to take this, I'm going to extrude it, and let's see what that would bring us from the side view. Okay. All right, so this would work. Now, when it comes to this other side, you can also see the result that we're getting here on this side. So that means that we have the correct shape from this side, but then this side needs modifying further. So let's go there and let's now play around with this one. Uh, in this case, uh, I'm also going to log this so we don't move it. And uh, here I think we need to just move, for example, this one side. So I'm going to move only these vertices, like so. Or what we can do, we can take these and these, and we can scale them like this. So it has the actual, the, the symmetric, symmetric scaling, so to say. So I'm also going to add more edges. Let's say insert edge on the middle. Let me see, middle point. That's it. And also on the top, insert edge. Let's go to the middle or maybe a little bit below. That's it. Okay, so I'm going to take these two, these three, and these three again. Again, let's do a couple of moves like this. So we get that symmetrical look. I think we need to go a little bit more. Okay. And uh, these two and these two. Let's take it inward. Actually, this one needs to go inward. This one as well. And these two are going out. Okay, something like this. And then if you really want to get uh, really, really uh, correct, you can put one more edge there and just take these two guys and bring them out. Maybe bring them down. To have that that look okay let's move this one out and you can see the result that uh, we're getting we're getting pretty close to this shape uh, and I think I'm, I'm quite happy with with this one maybe this edge here let me see so yeah so let's take one more edge here let's do insert edge do midpoint and I think I'm going to take these two I'm going to bring them like this okay so something like this all right and let's take these and let's do set point let's bring them to Z to be the same height and that should oh, that should do the trick uh, Maybe these points as well. Set point, Z. Okay. Okay, so this edge is going to be like, if you want to refine the edge, you can, you know, move it like this. But for, for this example, I think it's quite good. And then uh, we let, let's modify the bottom. So let's pull these guys out. Let's see what we can undo here. Let's pull these guys. Let's pull these two. Or actually these three vertices out. Okay, and here I can pull these guys a little bit. You can see how we have this gradual, gradual move. Maybe on this side we want to take these to just a tiny bit in, like so. Uh, and then we even might create one edge here and push this just a tiny bit in. Okay. All right, and I think we're quite done here with this middle part, just the bottom part is left. So we take these two, bring them out. Uh, let's take these two, bring them out and let's put one edge in the middle. Insert edge, let's put this in the middle. Let's bring it out. Maybe this one as well. Okay, so when you go to low poly, if you see that it's something is sticking out, probably means that we need to fix it. So you always want to go back and forth and you want to modify this as you go along. 
uh, because this sub demodeling is not like a linear process. You can always go back and change whatever changes you you've done. So for example here, I, I think I messed something up. So I'm gonna delete this edge and I have a better, better shape. So uh, it's always, it can always happen that you mess something up and then you want to correct it. And then for some reason it doesn't work. So that's normal. And uh, in this case, let's add another edge below here and uh, I think if we move this edge just a tiny bit here okay let's bring this in and you can see that that's how we get this this um, this transition here Okay, so that's 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 quite uh, quite good. I'm actually quite happy with uh, with the shape already. And uh, now, just on the bottom here, we're going to try, we are going to cut it, so we don't we don't need to worry about it necessarily. Now let's go to 3D. Let's see what we did. Okay, so this is like the shape that that we got so far. From this point, it's symmetrical. From this point, it's a little bit uh, asymmetrical, but that's uh, that's how this is designed. You can see that we made a little bit of a mess here on the top, but that's that's also not a problem because um, we can always come back. For example, I can delete this, can delete this uh, edge loop, and then we just have the top like this, and then we can play around with it afterwards. Uh, for now, I think this is fine from sub D. Uh, of course, if you don't like this shape, maybe maybe you think it should be a little bit more refined. Feel free to do so. Uh, I think it's it's almost there but i'm going to leave it like this and uh and yeah that would be it regarding the sub d and now let's convert this to poly surface and let's see what's our next step okay so now let's convert this to uh the poly surface i'm going to make a copy of it and i'm going to copy it in place and i'm simply going to make a new layer and i'm going to call it uh sub d so we have this just in case we want to change something afterwards now uh, at this point let's convert this so i'm simply going to go here and i'm going to choose convert object to nerves i'm going to delete input and click uh click uh, and you can see how we have just a single fluid surface this is a new version of uh rhino 7 work in progress that has this capability before this wasn't the case which is great so now we can simply take this and we can cut it and we can say for example split Let's cut this guy and we have that that single surface however here we want to uh, to actually create this something like indent here in the facade so I'm going to go to the, to the side view and I'm going to go uh, and I'm going to create this line so I'm simply going to create one line here and uh, let's copy this line okay and with that uh, we don't need anything else from there. We can simply uh, split this guy. Let's do split. And now we have this element and now we can do whatever we want with it. Uh, but first, uh, let's, uh, let's see what would be the best option. Yeah, so maybe we want to create the top first. So I'm gonna say planar surface. And then, uh, then we can use these guys and we can say we can offset them inward or better let's do uh, extrusion let's do extrude surface and i'm going to pick the direction and let's say 0 0.0.2 okay and now are we gonna do the same thing on the opposite side let's do extrude surface pick direction 0 0.2 and i'm going to uh, extract this surface on this side and this one okay now we have this this element that is extruded in and now if you can see that uh if, we, if you isolate these two guys you can see that they are actually empty so the last thing that we need to do is um, actually take this two and let's do sweep two sweep two here here and then this guy and this guy this will give us a nice surface and also on this element here in this case, it's a little bit tricky because you have like a double uh, double edge here. So you want to uh, take these edges, you want to uh, say duplicate edge, and then you want to join them. 
and then you would do sweep two. Take this one, this one, and then this newly created curve with the bottom. Now we can uh, just join everything here. And we have uh, them as single units. So now I'm going to add a little bit more details on the top. So uh, let's uncover the images and let's see um, how we can, we can do this. So if you go from the top, you will see that um, this is the thickness. So let's go to the top and I'm going to create circle we can use this circle let's see on the side if this is gonna be enough okay i think yeah so for example we can you know it, it seems that it seems to me that it has different thicknesses as it goes up so that's that's totally fine so we can for example scale it like this first and then we can change it as as it goes up so Let's say this is this initial one. Then let's let's copy it over. Now the second one should be smaller. Okay. Then the last one should be even even smaller than this one. And let's see from this side. Okay. One more one more and one more so this is how many we have so i'm going to you know approximately scale them in so it makes the most sense okay and i'm simply going to make some uh some lines here to organize my my heights and for example here i'm going to do scale 1d bring it here same thing from here and this is how we're gonna proceed with all of them in these cases we can just extend them like this and then we can split them later on that's also easier scale 1d okay and now i'm simply going to go take this guys and are going to split them okay and now let's do, let's do split, select all of these and split them with all of these guys. And we can now just, just delete the, the extra details and that would be it. Okay, so we have, uh, we have that ready. All right, so we're done here with the surface modeling and now we're gonna take this bad boy to Grasshopper and see what we can do there to make this a little bit more detailed. Uh, before we hop into uh, Grasshopper, just notice that we didn't close these cylinders. So I'm just simply going to uh, take all of them and I'm going to say cap. And this will close off the tops. So we have a nice geometry there. And here we can also use scale 1D to just bring this guy until this point. Okay, so now let's go to Grasshopper and let's see uh, what this definition does and how we can uh, create a little bit more details uh, to our to our project here. So uh, let's let's go step by step. So let's see uh, what we did here. So we have a B wrap, typical B wrap. Uh, we simply used this B wrap here, and keep in mind that you also want to to uh, take out, take out these edges. So you want to extract this surface and this surface, and also the surfaces on the bottom. So that's that's what we did here in the background. And now we have this as a single B rep, and uh, now we just simply brought brought it as a bonding box. And our goal here is to uh, to have one point at the bottom. So that's why we use a valid box. This will give us uh, this will give us the uh, the plane on the top and the plane on the bottom. We want to take just a single point at the bottom so this is the the point that you're taking on the bottom that's the whole idea and let's see what we do here with this point so this is one single point and now we want to move it we want to uh, create a sequence of uh, all of this so to say like um, like levels so this is the place where we control the movement of of this point and of these levels so by by controlling this these points so and this is going to be the, the height, 150 centimeters. That's going to be the height of, of these guys. And then 
uh, what we did here. We simply said, okay, let's let's now take with list item. Let's just take uh, this first point. So this list item selects this point on the top, and then it says, okay, now let's move these guys up, or let's copy them, so to say. And then we used copy, and then we created uh, some sort of like a gradual. You can see that they are not spaced evenly they are spaced like they are starting to spread out until this point and then uh, later on uh, at, at this level we want to keep the same distance so this is the area where all these uh, all these levels are going to be equal and that's that's why we uh, we take this uh, this movement movement here so we have sort so to say like uh, one two three four of these sections so we have one section here one section here, one section here, and this one uh, first at the bottom. That's why in the definition we have four of these components, four of these move components. So now I'm going to also show you the last one. And here it is. So I'm going to now select every second one so you have an idea of what we're doing. So this is this is pretty much explain, explaining this process here. So we have this first section, we have the second section, third one and fourth one. So the idea here is that we want uh, all the things, all the levels in this area number three to be equal and they are equal and also in the level one they will be equal but in level two and level four uh, they're getting uh, like a different type of distribution so you can see how they're gradually expanding this way they are like starting slow and then they, uh, uh, they, they increase and the same thing goes here in number four but on the opposite side. Uh, so that's that's the idea behind behind this and then at the end of this once we have all of these points created we want to to merge them and we want to use call duplicates to to take out all of the du duplicate points so we have only single single point and at the end we simply want to use those points and we want to cut it with the geometry uh, we want to cut it with the initial b wrap at this point we're getting or getting all of these uh, divisions. And then of course, lastly, we simply want to extrude those in the same way and we want to cap those holes. And at the end, you're gonna get this, this geometry. So now let's let's just dive dive deep deeper into, into the, to the details of, of how we, we do this. So, so first off, as I said before here, we take one point and we use a simple move command to bring it up until this point and that's what is located here then the next step is to take take this first point here or actually the last point it depends how you want to look at it you, you do this by using list item with minus one and if i just select this you'll see that's just that one single point and then we want to move that point gradually and that's why we are we're having this this part of the definition this is showing us uh how how to uh, evaluate how to have this distance of these points. You can see that we used um, graph mapper to actually control the distribution. You can see how this is changing here. So it really uh, it's really based on how you want to uh, to 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 look at it. Usually th this is what we have here. We have six steps. Of course you can you can have even less steps. For example, you can have four steps. And this is like the optimal that I found that is like the best the best option. So that's why we keep it there and then we simply remap those numbers and we use a mass addition component to, to to actually output the units so we have these numbers and we say to uh, do the move command okay move this point into these uh, segments with unit z and after that we repeat the same process we have the same type of uh, idea with with the movement so we're simply in this case, we're, we're just uh, doing the fixed movements. So now we have the series component and we say, okay, this is number four. So this is going to be our, uh, our height. So for example, if we change this to, let's say five, you can see how this distribution will change. But like I've, I found here that four is going to be the best, the best uh, option for us. So that's why we keep it as number four. And now this is like the count how many of these you want to have and uh, we get that uh, at the end and now lastly we have the same thing going on here with these smaller 
smaller guys and how they are divided. And uh, usually here uh, we also use graph mapper to uh, to try to control this a little bit further if you want. But uh, again, this is something that is going to work uh, in this case. So once we have this at the top, we simply merge all of these guys together. Let me hide all of this now from here. Okay, so we have we came to here. We have all of these points as as a single um, list. We have a list of all these points. And the thing here now is that uh, it, it, it may happen that we have some duplicate uh, duplicate um, uh, points. And that's why we're using call duplicates with uh, leave one option turned on. And uh, this will give us uh, later on all of these planes that we want to use to get the, the cut. And that's why we're using uh, deconstruct, uh, deconstruct point because uh, we want to take the Z vector of these points and we want to sort all of these guys. We want to sort them by, by height. That's why you, we use sort list. We sort them by, uh, by Z factor and we also uh, take out the, the one that is uh, number, number zero because on number zero, we're not gonna cut anything. So uh, that's, that's the only place where we don't need anything. So, so you can see here that we cut this first one, that initial one that we don't need. And now comes the component called uh, BREP, um, BREP plane, which means that uh, you want to intersect our BREP, and that's uh, our BREP from here, with these planes. When we do this, when we do this inter intersection, we will get these, these uh, outer shell lines, so to say, like, like edge lines. And now let's, let's also hide everything else so we have a better idea of what we did. So we have those uh, those uh, section cuts, uh, and at this point uh, we can simply use a component called region union, and this will make sure this will make sure that all of these uh, all of these curves around are connected. So you want to make sure that uh, this is some sort of like a curve boolean if you just if you would just do it directly in Rhino, uh, and that's that's the same type of uh, component here uh, region union that that is used for for that purpose. And this is uh, like an interesting part here. Um, we use one point on, on that curve. It doesn't matter which point it is. In this case, it's just middle point. We can use any other point. And we want to deconstruct that, that point and use the Z factor of that point. Uh, why are we doing this? Because we want to use this component that's called relative differences. This is, uh, this is very uh, useful component, particularly for this kind of uh, this kind of situation because what it does it actually it actually says okay uh, I want I want all of these points so these points that you can see here at the end and I want to deconstruct them based on the Z factor this means that we're taking only the Z coordinate and we're putting it into relative differences so what relative distances uh, actually do this component it simply gives you the distance between Z factors of two single points. So for example, now it's giving us all these uh, all these distances. And the reason why we need these distances is because we want to do the extrusion of these, uh, of these lines. So we're actually using this component to give us the distances we're gonna be using for extrusion. And that's what's uh, shown here. We took, the, uh, we took these points, we took these edges, and then we used uh, the extrusion based on the relative differences uh, option. And lastly, at the end, uh, we can simply let me just close this off. And you can see that this just need, needs to be capped at the end. So we simply, we simply use the cap holes and this is going to be our results. So now simply we can just big this and let's uh, see the final result. All right, now let's just see this in our uh, style, how this would look like. So you can see that uh, this is uh, the final result that we got for this project. In the extended version of this tutorial, which is available only at our Patreon page, we will be exploring the ways to create some additional details for this project, 
we'll be focusing on creating the algorithm for Windows only on a specific upper area. The link for this extended tutorial is in the description. With that, you will get access to all of our extended tutorials and extra project files on our Patreon page. I'd like to thank all of our patrons. Thank you guys, your support is really appreciated. If you like what we do, please consider becoming Patreon yourself. If you'd like a structured step-by-step -step approach in learning Rhino and Grasshopper architectural presentation, animation, rendering, you can apply for our Rhino for Architects 2.0 course. First link in the description. Oh, <laughs>